What has the digital done to our world? Uh, this was a very big question, and the first thing I thought was destroy my handwriting so I can only type because I can't read anything that I write anymore. Um, and then I thought about it, and I thought, you know, I think one of the cornerstones of the digital world is efficiency. You hear that word constantly, and it's the new, you know, god of the modern world. And it was actually born out of the assembly line. Like, how do you make things faster and cheaper um, and more efficient so more people can get it? And it kind of moved from the industrial revolution to the digital uh, data revolution that's currently happening, is how do we make things more efficient? And one of the big, big data wins is uh, this company called UPS in the US is a courier. And they did a ton of data collection on their routes and how where drivers go. And they set their, it's a big brown truck, and they put sensors in every single part of their truck. And after they crunched all this data, they realized, one, we can deliver packages faster if they never turn left. So you'll see a UPS truck, and it'll just go around like this. And you'll be like, why is it doing that? It's because in the US, you don't have to wait to take a left to take a right turn. So now they're just only taking right turns, and they're getting their packages delivered even faster. And then they put sensors throughout the trucks. So the moment you know, tire pressure goes down a little bit, a thing goes off and they fill the truck, the tire air with everything. Um, the, uh, when I'm home, uh, my parents live in the US, uh, a lot of my friends here will deliver packages to my parents' house. So I'll see the UPS driver just hop out of the car, run to my door, ring the doorbell, leave the package and run back. It's because there's a sensor on the seat that tells you how long you've been out of the, out of the truck, right? And they're documenting all of this to make package delivery so efficient. Um, and, you know, when you're thinking about that efficiency, you're thinking, wow, I'm getting my packages, like, really quickly. And then you're like, and the driver is so efficient with his time, right? But when you look at it from a rights perspective, does my right to a quick package delivery mean that he has to run up and down everyone's driveway to get the package there faster? And what do you do with that information is really a question that I don't really have an answer to. But the idea of efficiency is really fascinating to me because what is efficiency? Efficiency is basically the incorporation of knowledge that you learn from completing a process, right? You've done it in the most inefficient way you can because you're figuring out trials and errors and you're like carving it down to as fast as possibly can be, as cheap as it can possibly be. Um, and that's what the digital world does really well with a few things, right? It, you communicate really quickly, you can like make lists and do a lot of things that are very specific very quickly and efficiently. And if you look at a lot of uh, digital innovation, it's basically they're innovating the same thing over and over and over again. It's like, can you chat faster? But if you have to talk, email is you can talk about anything on email. What if you have a specific thing to talk about? Then you need like a different, you need a chat, and then you need a Slack, and then you need a WhatsApp. And then you, like, it's not necessarily making the process of communicating more efficient. It's just making certain kinds of communication more efficient at different times. And that's what the digital world does really well. And at the same time, though, the promises of making things really quick and really fast, you're not actually doing everything really quick or really fast. It's because you didn't go through the whole process in the first place, right? We didn't solve inequality. So you can't make access to information for everyone more efficient because you didn't solve it in the first place. You have to go through it and solve it and then make it more efficient. That's usually how it works. Uh, so for a lot of these conversations about what's changing in our world is that I have my laptop, I had my desktop, I wanted to take it around with me, now I have a laptop. I've made it more efficient, so that's this size. Then it has to be my phone. Then my phone has to also communicate with my car and my watch. And you have to communicate faster in different realms, in different ways, and then they have to put in circuitry into everything, right? And then 
as part of that circuitry, it's collecting data, it's collecting information about you to make it even more efficient. Now my, my keyboard on my phone knows how I text, so I can text faster to the same five people that I call and email, right? So it's doing what it's supposed to do, and it's getting better at those things. And then we're expecting more from it when we didn't go through the process of fixing those problems in the first place. So I think that's a way that I have been thinking about this problem, right? So um, with smart cities, everyone likes to blame inefficiency for why uh, services don't get provided, but you can't make it more efficient if they didn't do it in the first place. They haven't provided water for all. You can't make that process more efficient because they haven't done it yet. They haven't paved all the streets yet. You can't make that process more efficient. Is efficiency really the issue and is smart cities really going to solve the problems if you haven't gone through the process of correcting everything in the first place? When you speak to people who want to implement smart cities, they talk about every Indian is basically a data point. They're a collector of data, they're a sensor. And that's a really powerful idea because India doesn't collect data in a way that you can plan because everyone's always fighting fires. No one gets to plan in this country. We're always like, oh my God, there's a billion people here. I've had so many conversations with government officials and they just, there's like, there's a billion people here. And you're just like, oh. <laughs> I understand that pain. I can't even imagine what you're feeling right now. But um, that's how they feel. It's like, you, could, you we have to fight these fires. So we need more data. People need to automatically generate data and send it to something so we can plan automatically and it'll happen automatically. And I think that fear is kind of interesting, but people are not a sensor. People are collections of sensors that evolved over hundreds of thousands of years, connecting to a brain that evolved at the same time and also adapts to your situation. Um, so I think what I'm struggling with is if we're all sensors, if we're all collecting this data and doing all these things, what brain are we connected to? More often than not, it's a marketing brain. It's like, how do I sell you stuff? Uh, which is frustrating for a lot of people because I think then it's like Facebook is collecting all my data to sell me things. They don't even sell you things really well. On Facebook, none of the ads make sense for my life. So I don't know. And every time I buy something, Google then tells me, oh, the thing you just bought is now 100 rupees cheaper. And I'm like, I, you know, that could have been useful before I bought it. Now it's not even useful. Like the thing they're supposed to do, they're not even very good at. So what brains are we being connected to as we become more digital? And who has access to the, to the brains, right? So I think well, some of the big examples is, you know, they put all the circuitry into cars. And uh, I think in the US, a couple of months back, a hacker actually hacked into someone's vehicle and stopped it, made a highway. Because um, you can. And, it's, and it's, it's a scary thought, but it's also like the same technology that allows you to do that allows you to also call for help when you need it, right? And it's the struggle with rights, and I think also the idea of the struggle with it, efficiency that is really where people have a hard time, especially with privacy and security. When I call ACT or whoever, I give them my phone number, they know who I am. That's really efficient and so much better than dealing with ACT and telling them things that they don't listen to and get wrong. But that also makes it easier for someone else to be me, right? So, I think from a conversation of rights, we also have to think about, you know, how do we interact with this technology? Because it's not like dealing with a person. You're not looking at someone's face. You're actually dealing with a very difficult interface. How do you make that easier plus protect yourself? Is something we haven't really figured out how to do and will get in our way in the long run. So I just wanted to kind of give those thoughts and say how do, we, how do we deal with becoming more efficient in some ways and then using that efficiency to not actually solve a problem through. We have to trial and error our way through to become more efficient. Efficiency is not actually a problem in and of itself. Um, it's a way to kind of make things that we've already figured out faster.
And what does that mean in terms of how people are fighting for rights across um, many other boards? So thank you.